This is Record Bases and Occlusion Rims, Part 2. It follows the construction of the maxillary triad record base. Be sure to cover Part 1 as it discusses another material that we would use in the project for record bases. Why exactly are we learning to make record bases? When you take two diagnostic casts on a patient, and you can't hand articulate them and have us know exactly where the bite is and have those two casts remain stable while we try to mount them, then we have to make record bases to assist us in the mounting of the case. That's why we're learning how to make record bases. Many of your patients will fall into that category. The bases are going to be used for jaw relation records and they should be made of an accurate material. We will make ours out of triad on the maxillary arch and a thermoplastic acrylic resin called Easy Tray on the mandible. They must have maximum contact with the supporting tissues for stability. They are designed to prevent movement of the record base in an anterior, posterior, and a lateral direction when the registration is made. Therefore, there is no relief for the record base except in the areas where the record base will be placed and undercuts exist on the teeth. We do not want to trap the record base on the cast. They must be aesthetic and pleasant for the patient to wear. You don't want to see any sharp spots or any sharp angles or edges that would cause injury to the patient. There are various materials that record bases and occlusion rims can be made from, and we're trying to give you a couple different experiences. They can be made of acrylic resin, which is the combination of a liquid and a powder that, when uh, mixed, will automatically set up with time. The shellac, which is a thermoplastic material. Triad, which is a composite light-cured material. Eclipse, which is a thermoplastic light-cured material made at a, at a um, laboratory. The cast metal base, which is fabricated at the laboratory. And the other one that we're going to use, which is Easy Tray, which is a thermoplastic material that can be heated up and then cooled with cool water. We'll discuss some of the qualities of Triad True Tray, which is a light-cured composite material. First of all, it's very easy to fabricate in the office, so that's a plus. Its initial equipment cost is rather expensive, so um, when you start out in office, you may not have enough money to actually jump in with one of these. The material warps during the curing with the light, and that's a negative part of it. And the material is very brittle and may break if, if it's into an undercut, or it may break a tooth off also. In it's one advantage over the auto cure acrylic resin that we have used in the past is a lack of really noxious fumes and a, a substance that isn't very good as far as biocompatibility. It's reasonably priced compared to sending a laboratory, uh, sending it to the laboratory to have them fabricated, and it's used for a variety of office surfaces once you make that initial investment. Some of the qualities of the thermoplastic acrylic resin that we are going to use called Easy Tray are the following. It's relatively easy to fabricate in the office, but there is a learning curve. You'll, you'll see the first time you try to make this. There's no initial cost for equipment, but I'm assuming that you already have a water bath or some type of a pot in which to heat water. The material warps during curing, and you do have to be careful and keep it in place and keep it on the cast so that it doesn't warp on you. you. It does not break as easily when it's caught into an undercut because there's some flexibility to the acrylic resin. It can still break off a tooth, but if you can't remove it from the cast, you can put it back into the water and then not run the risk of breaking that tooth off. It doesn't have any noxious fumes or uh, materials that are considered carcinogenic in it like the acrylic resin, the auto cure. It's reasonably priced compared to having laboratory base plates made, and it's used in a variety of services in the office. 
Another nice thing is there's no waste to this material. If you don't like your product, you simply put it back in the water bath and start over again when the material is soft. Here is some of the armamentarium needed for this particular project. You need a water bath, a Hanau torch with alcohol, a Bunsen burner to melt the wax, matches or a lighter, a paper cup with water in it, a little cup with Vaseline in it, a small amount to lubricate the cast, a surveyor, two pieces of base plate wax and one piece of sticky wax, an easy tray shape, the mandibular one, one triad true tray, a millimeter ruler or perio probe, a slow speed handpiece, your acrylic burrs, a hot plate, a number 11 and number 7 spatula, a barred parker handle with blade, a hot plate to adjust the wax, and scissors to cut the material. What you need to work on on this project is your diagnostic cast that you made from your two deniforms. Before you begin, ideally you will survey the cast so that you can see the undercuts and then place the design of the record base on the cast. There are no rules other than the fact that you want this base plate to be stable and you don't want it to move anterior posteriorly or laterally when making a jaw registration. Use base plate wax to block out parallel any undercuts, tooth, or tissue into which the material may be placed. Examples are deep embrasures, prominent rugae, bony tissue covered undercuts, and below the survey line on the teeth. Do not go above the survey line with your blockout wax. The arrows are pointing to some of the areas needing blockout to eliminate undercuts. The labial flange may cross a slight undercut and require minimal blockout. The deep embrasures require slight blockout. There are some prominent rugae that have broken off when the triad got caught under them, and of course, the infrabulges on the lingual and proximal surfaces of the teeth are required blockout. Place a model releasing agent on the cast where the triad material is to be placed. We don't carry triad model releasing agent, so we use a thin layer, thin layer of Vaseline or a couple applications of SuperSep. Open the package of Triad True Tray at the time you're ready to use it. It will set up in the light of the classroom over time. Adapt the material well to the cast. You have plenty of working time to, before that material hardens. Adapt it to the lingual surfaces of the cast first. Push the triad down on the cast well so that no air is trapped on the tissue side of the triad. Make certain that the material is placed on the super bulge of the tooth, above the survey line and not on the wax. When you have adapted it, use a barred parker blade to trim away the excess and to scallop the material into the embrasures. Remove any material that is into an undercut. Place retentive grooves or dents on the areas where the wax rims will be placed. Wax does not adhere as well to triad as it does to acrylic resin. Follow the design shown on the bottom left. Triad comes in various colors. The instructions for this procedure are for translucent triad. The curing times for the colored triad are longer. When the materials at the desired design, place the triad base plate material into a light curing machine. Because of the shrinkage, cure it for 20 seconds and then check the pallet adaptation. Press it up against the pallet well. Place an air barrier coating of Vaseline on the triad. This will prevent a sticky surface on the outside from forming. Adjust the shelf to the height where you get maximum light exposure. Replace the cast after the 20 seconds and cure for a total of 4 minutes. Remove the cast from the curing unit and check for adaptation of the record base to the palette. It should be well adapted if you followed those steps previously. Carefully remove the base plate from the cast. This is where it gets a little bit tricky because this material is not forgiving. It doesn't flex and it can take a tooth off if it's into an undercut. 
Place an air barrier coating on the triad record-based tissue side and place it back into the unit and cure for one additional minute. Therefore, the total curing time is five minutes, four minutes on the cast, and one minute with the tissue side up. Then take the record base off the cast and go to the sink and wash it really well with soap and water to remove all of the Vaseline. With a slow speed handpiece and an acrylic resin burr, remove any sharp areas on the edges of the record base in the area of the flanges. Those edges should be rounded and have no right angles on them. Do not remove points that go into the embrasure. You may round them slightly, but you want that area to extend into the embrasures for lateral and anterior posterior stability. Do not remove surfaces in contact with the teeth unless you have taken the material too close to the occlusal surface and possibly have an occlusion interference. If you didn't place retention into the base plate prior to curing it, then use an 8 or a 10 round burr to score the surface where the wax rim will be added. This helps to retain the wax rim. I like to place my retention on the buckle of the flange and slightly on the lingual so that the combination of the two lock the wax mechanically onto the base plate. Be sure to clean it again with soap and water. Wax rims do not stick very well to triad material. You need to add sticky wax to the areas where a record or an occlusion rim is to be placed. Using a Bunsen burner, heat one piece of base plate wax along the long side until it is molten and slowly fold it like an accordion upon itself to form a rim of wax that can be used for the occlusion rim. The wax may be repeatedly heated to assure that the surface of the wax is molten when you make the folds of the wax. You have to have good bonding between those pieces as you place them together. You may have to use an additional half piece of wax to get enough height to form an occlusion rim. The desired height of the rim, if you have teeth, would be to the height of the existing teeth. After your block of wax is formed, cut pieces equal to the size of each edentulous area. Heat the pieces of the base plate wax and the sticky wax with a Hanau torch and adhere them together to form the record base occlusion rim. Additional wax must be added to the sides of the rim down to two millimeters above the bottom of the flange. You will use that leftover piece of wax and the 31 spatula to do this task. Using the number 31 spatula, add additional wax to within two millimeters of the depth of the flange of the record base and use the spatula, Hanau torch, and Bunsen burner to finish the wax. This aids in the retention of the rim to the triad. Use a hot plate to adjust the height of the rim to the level of the occlusal plane of the other remaining teeth. If you had an extension base side, the wax is terminated one centimeter anterior to the hamular notch area on the maxillary arch. The number 31 spatula will help you to achieve the contours desired for the rim. Trim the excess anterior wax back to follow the contours of the lingual surfaces of the remaining teeth. The buckle should mimic the contour of the arch form and it should follow the buckle or facial surfaces of the remaining teeth. The width of the rim should be about four to six millimeters. It should also slope downward to become confluent with the palate. Using the number 31 wax spatula, contour the buccal surfaces to follow the height of contour of the adjacent abutment teeth. The wax should extend approximately two millimeters from the bottom of the flange. It should converge to the occlusal to prevent dislodgement by the cheeks and the tongue in function. The wax should be in contact with the adjacent teeth and follow the natural contours of the arch. Use the Hanau torch to smooth the wax by brushing the flame lightly on the surface of the wax, allowing it to become molten and then to set. The width of the posterior rim is approximately 8 to 10 millimeters in width. 
What it really does is it should mimic the width of the teeth on either side of the edentulous area if they're present. The premolar is about 8 millimeters wide and the molar is about 10 millimeters wide. The width of the anterior rim is 4 to 6 millimeters. The lingual and facial surfaces usually follow the contour of the surfaces of the adjacent teeth. The rim should be in contact with the adjacent teeth on the sides, and it should follow or mimic the natural teeth prior to their loss, unless different aesthetics and occlusion are desired. Hold the cast and look down the contours of the natural teeth. The labial contour should follow the height of contour of the adjacent teeth. Be sure to anticipate the curvature of the arch that will be used for tooth placement. Here's a properly done facial area on the record base. Notice that the corners of the base plate are rounded, that the flange extends down to within two millimeters of the depth of the cast on the diagnostic cast. If this were a master cast, it should extend all the way to the depth of the vestibule. The wax also extends to within two millimeters of the depth of the flange. The record base should adapt well to the palate. It should also be thinned out in the posterior area to become confluent with the palate. A record base that is thick and has a ledge across the back will elicit the gag reflex of the patient. The characteristics of an acceptable record base and record rim are that it be stable, meaning that it seats solidly on the cast and tissues and you do not have any anterior posterior movement or lateral movement when you place your finger on it and try and shift it around. It should be neat and clean. The design should be conducive to stability and the design should not interfere with the occlusion of the opposing arch. Here is a summary of the specifications for the record base and occlusion rims and we'll touch on each one. The finish of the record base itself should have all of the edges that are rounded and smooth, no sharp 90 degree blunt edges on it. All aspects of the design should be rounded to follow the musculature. In other words, it should dip up around the frenum attachments and it should be placed anywhere from to the depth of the vestibule to within two millimeters above the depth of the vestibule. The embrasure areas should be the only sharp areas that are left and the undersurface should be free of voids and really both sides. The height of the wax should be the height of the remaining natural teeth. The hot plates used to accomplish this. If no posterior teeth remain, as in an extension base cast, the height of the rim mimics the remaining natural teeth and parallels the ridge. It, the wax rim itself should end one centimeter anterior to the hemular notch. The base plate, though, must extend into the hemular notch on an extension base area. The width of the rims is in the anterior 4 to 6 millimeters and in the posterior 8 to 10 millimeters, but if teeth are present, you mimic the width of the teeth. The shape of the wax rims converge to the occlusal from a broad base which is attached to the record base. If it extends too far buckly, then the cheek will catch it on function and dislodge the record base. The wax extends to about two millimeters above the border of the flange on the buckle, and it goes across the ridge and down the lingual for stability. This gives the rim a large bonding surface for strength when the occlusal forces are applied to the rims. The record base of triad does not need to be polished if you have kept the triad material neat and clean. If you adjusted the area significantly, you may want to polish it. The easy tray does not need to be polished. When you work the material when it's heated, you should be able to get a real nice smooth surface by wetting your finger and polishing it with it. The wax rim should be smooth with no Vaseline for polish. If you want to polish your wax, Place the rim under cold water and use a two by two wet gauze to polish or to shine it. Here's an acrylic finishing kit that's available to you in clinic. It consists of first, a number 10 round lab shank burr for placing holes in your custom tray or for fine adjustments. 
The second is a coarse acrylic polishing rubber cone. When you have adjusted the acrylic and you want to bring it back to a high shine, this would be used in the first step of polishing the acrylic back to its high shine. Next is a number 557 or 558 lamp shank burr that is used to adjust the frenum areas on the base plate or on the final dentures when they're too narrow. Secondly, a medium acrylic polishing rubber cone is placed in this kit, and it's for the second step when you're trying to bring the acrylic polishing back to a high shine. Next, you have a narrow acrylic resin trimmer that is used to adjust frenum areas on the base plates or on the final denture and on very narrow ridges where the larger ones will not fit. Next, you have a fine acrylic in polishing cone for placing a high shine back on the acrylic flange. It's used as the third step in polishing acrylic. Next, there's acrylic resin trimmer, which is larger than the other one, which can be used on the flange areas or on larger ridges for adjustment. And lastly, we have a real deep cut acrylic burr that is used for removing soft liners that are in the dentures. Or, when they get dull, you place them in the laboratory to reduce gypsum products like quickstone. Here's a summary of all of the things you're looking for on a good maxillary record base. Label your cast on the posterior surface as it sits on the desktop. Label the record base also because they sometimes get separated from the cast. Be sure to clean off the blockout wax from your cast before you turn it in and turn it in to the boxes that are labeled for your unit lab.